Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mindset Monday. My name is Miranda Ayim, a two-time Olympian with Team Canada, and today we're talking about three big culprits that take our time, energy, and attention and focus them in on things that are quite negative, very unhelpful, and ultimately quite draining. So we're going to be talking about some simple shifts away from those, how we can build into a more positive, peaceful perspective. So we all deal with a certain level of stress or pressure in our everyday lives, and we all deal with it in different times. And often when we realize that it's a bit of a problem, we start to try to add things into our life that we think will help. So maybe we start to go to the gym or take up a yoga class, try to add some meditation or some other calming techniques that we feel like will be a good idea for us to calm down, get some peace. But what if we took a counterintuitive approach? Instead of throwing a bunch of solutions at the problem, what if we eliminated what prompted it in the first place? There's a lot of things that regularly stress us out, but I've identified three that seem to be root causes and feed into a lot of other issues that come up again and again and draw our energy and attention away from either our everyday task or our relationships or our focus that we're, we're trying to bring to work or into our personal lives. Now, again, these three things are very simple, but sometimes we just need a reminder of the things that we need to be focusing on and cutting down on these three things may be a more feasible way to add a bit of mindfulness into your life instead of a 10 minute meditation session, which is sometimes difficult for people who are just trying to get into this and shift some mindset. So this is a simple way even if it's a bit counterintuitive of removing things instead of trying to add or build a whole new habit. All right, let's get into it. Number one, complaining. I define complaining as resisting reality. So we know that reality includes some pretty crappy stuff. We have to deal with all sorts of things that come into our life whether it be rude people, unexpected expenses, some bad luck, some rough situations when things don't go as planned and the loss is feeling pretty real. But at the end of the day, this is life. There's no amount of complaints that will change what has happened, is happening, or will happen. And we know that instead of staying in a state that is fighting what we can do is accept it, form our game plan, and ask ourselves the question, is this situation changeable? Okay, if it is, let's change it. If it's not changeable, which sometimes happens, then the next step is to change your attitude. And it's done. Because all this woe is me puts you in a position of victimhood and you completely strip yourself of the agency and the power to exercise control over your life. So while complaining may feel like a release, it often does in the moment, it really in the long term does nothing to solve the situation at hand. Instead, it effectively blinds you to any opportunity for growth, understanding or positive outcome. All right, number two is cramming. Now, you can begin to notice I kind of like alliteration here, so all three points will start with C, but cramming is number two. Now, let me ask you this question. When was the last time you felt completely still at peace? If you're like most people, it might have been quite a while. 
We are always constantly filling our days, hours, and minutes with things to do, to say, to finish. I talked about this um, at length in the last Mindset Monday, if you guys want to take a look at that. And it's just about how we are always trying to find, find time, first of all, make time, and also save time. And any free time we may have is immediately gobbled up as we stuff those in-between moments with busy work, TV, or irrelevant amusements. And this constant noise and movement has a tendency to feed stress, anxiety, and confusion. A constant state of cramming starts to make your mind and body a pretty hectic place to inhabit. But what if you removed some of that extra stuff? Now, what classifies as extra? It's the time wasters, energy drainers, and attention stealers. It's the stuff that, if you're honest with yourself, is adding little or no value to your life. I've had this discussion with myself when I've challenged myself over some habits or pastimes that haven't been adding a lot of value to my life. That's why I decided to cut TV out of my life. Um, I did a cold turkey and reclaimed quite a bit of lost time and lost energy as well. This isn't a recommendation for everyone to go and stop uh, watching TV. TV is not the devil here, but just asking ourselves the question, why am I doing this? What is this bringing into my life? Is it a positive force? Is it a negative force? Or perhaps maybe it's just a neutral force and you could be using that time and energy and attention for something a little bit more beneficial that's adding into your purpose, your relationships, your goals. So that's the first step or rather the second step in our list of three things that we could maybe be cutting out of our life to reclaim some peace. All right, on to the next one. Number three is comparing. As much as we like to think that we are great multitaskers, our attention cannot be divided. We cannot think about two things at once because our focus moves sequentially. It follows then if we're caught up in what someone else has, We cannot then be thinking about what we have. Any potential for enjoyment is wasted because we're not paying attention. Envy has the potential to negatively affect life satisfaction as wonderfully illustrated by a recent study by Franz DeWall and Sarah Brosnan. After completing a simple task, two little monkeys were given one piece of cucumber each. Both accepted their reward and contentedly munched away. The next time, however, the first monkey was given a grape, while the other received a piece of cucumber again. The second monkey promptly threw his cucumber against the cage and refused to eat it. Now, I laugh when I think of that petulant monkey sulking because he didn't get his grape. And I get it. Grapes are delicious. But is it necessary? Is it absolutely vital to your happiness? Envy is insidious. It spawns ungratefulness, discontent, and bitterness. And feeding this feeling will have you always trying to measure up. But statistically speaking, there will always be someone richer, smarter, or better looking than you. So just eat your cucumber. So a quick recap of the three things we could use less of in our life are complaining, that resisting reality, instead shifting our focus and focusing on what we can do, what we can change, and how we will use this situation as a growth opportunity. Number two, cramming, filling all of our spare moments and everything in between with something to do without leaving space for stillness. Number three, Comparing, getting caught up in what those around you have, not being grateful for what you do have, and letting that disintegrate into ungratefulness, discontent, and bitterness. 
Remember the Q, eat your cucumber. Now my question for y'all is, which of these three things could you use less of in your life? Which one do you find yourself falling victim to? It might not be equal for all three in your life, just like it might not be the same for someone close to you. So take inventory of which ones you're feeding and try starving them out for a change. Take that counterintuitive approach instead of trying to add a bunch of stuff to your problems to find a solution. Try to avoid what might be feeding them in the first place. Thank you so much for joining me for this Mindset Monday, for taking the time to listen in, to make a pause in your day, and to be intentional about how you're spending your time and your life. I hope that our discussion of these three culprits that are stealing your time, energy, and attention serve as a timely reminder for you to refocus and assess where your focus and attention and energy is going. And from there, finding a way to reduce the amount of times you're getting distracted by these culprits and feeding instead into a purposeful, peaceful, and powerful stance in how you move through your day-to-day life. As usual, you can always reach out to me on any social media platform. I'd love to hear your comments, suggestions, questions. I would love to connect with you guys. Also, if you have a friend or a colleague that you think would benefit from this podcast, go ahead and share it with them. It's always great to share what we've learned and what has added value to our life. So thank you again for spending your time and energy with me here today. Have a wonderful rest of your day and continue cultivating your best you.